Winsurance and Carolina from EI. I think we're nearly there on YouTube and we'll get started. So get those questions in, folks. If you've got any questions for the Dream Team tonight, um, especially at the moment on visas, any aspect of coming into the With country, insurance. visas and, and uh, insurance as well. EI. I think we're nearly there. Ask those questions, please, uh, in the chat, if you will. So let's get back to where I can see everybody. Yeah, hi, Christina. Good to see you there. And um, I've got a question, actually, uh, a, uh, a quite a specialist question about bicycles, carrying bicycles on motor vehicles, which I think is quite complicated here in Portugal. But before we get into the specifics of that, uh, I do invite you all to get your questions in into the chat straight away uh, so we don't run out of time. And let's go first, if we may, to Carolina, uh, Carolina Acuna at uh, EI to find out how it's going in the world of migration today. How are things looking with Imer and uh, formerly Seth, Carolina? Hi, hello everyone. Good evening. Well, immigration, well, actually today um, a news article was leaked or actually not leaked, but issued um, with uh, news from a new platform being in place for scheduling for family reunification for kids between five and 10 year old, years old. Um, there's speculation that the family attached to those uh, family, those minors, um, could probably be um, included on this new package. Let's say that um, we are still waiting to see. The platform went live at six p.m. Port Portugal time, wow. and we are. Um, looking, we, we already contacted uh, pretty much all of our clients in this specific situation to request documents, additional documents um, for us to be able to submit the platform. So everyone that is already um, working with us does not need to worry about that. We already have their processes um, rolling. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's um, something new. But is, we even... Yeah, but we even had lawyers go today to to I'm to I'm an appointment, <laughs> and they asked the clerks, and none of them knew anything about it. Oh, so it's like it's news, but it's a little weird yet. So, but hopefully something good for family reunification. So it sounds like somewhere in IMA that there are people endeavouring to to address the backlog, to bring in new systems, to open up appointments, and maybe their communications um, team needs to do a little bit more work to have everything a little bit more joined up so everyone knows about that. But that is encouraging, would you say? Yes, I would. Um, that's very promising. A lot of people have been waiting for so many months now, and a lot of people are on a um, precarious situation, and hopefully... Right. This this new this new portal can can be a way to resolve it. Yeah, yeah, superb. Well, that's good news. Anything else uh, to tell us uh, from the front line of migration, uh, Carolina? Um, everything else pretty much um, is the same. Everything is going smoothly. Even though we are on the new year, I have not seen much changes from last year to the new year. Just the with the minimum wage going up the minimums go up yeah. so new call new numbers for all um like minimums of standards of each visa and for the collective of savings that every immigrant should show when applying so those change but if one fulfills that they are pretty smooth Yep, superb. Okay, so good to know. Uh, get those uh, visa questions in, those migration questions in for EI. Uh, Catalina, uh, into the chat, if you will, please, both here and over on YouTube. Let's go and find out what's going on in the world of insurance. Um, Christina, how are you this evening? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> good, to see you. good to see you. Anything to report? How we like it in the world of insurance, we just like to hear no news is good news. It's all very quiet and easygoing in insurance. Is that the case? No, it's all right. Everything is all right. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right. So, thank you very much. Am I right in um, thinking that you're a, you specialize in the autos and uh, motor insurance uh, over there at Winsurance? Is that your area of expertise? In my area, it's more the um, auto. Yes. Um, okay. If you have any question, I, maybe I, I can do. Help you. 
Funnily enough, uh, yeah, asking for a friend, um, but I'll come back to that because I'm not going to abuse my privilege of being host, but I will ask a question that somebody asked me um, in just a moment after we've asked Debbie's question on insurance. Okay. Um, I, I need travel insurance before my D7 appointment on February the 22nd. Do I just need it until I arrive in Portugal on May the 20th or for longer? Also, when must I switch to private insurance, which I totally plan to do? So what would you say about that? Well, uh, about the travel insurance, I think you must have, uh, uh, you must send us an email with all your questions and then we'll, we will uh, send you a message. All right, perfect. Uh, Debbie. Okay. She had we have a response. I did send an email and got a reply, but didn't really understand it. Sorry, don't no need to apologize. Um, you can uh, uh, we, we can look out for that tomorrow, right, Christina? From Debbie, yes, of course, of course, I'll pick that up tomorrow. And of course, you can call on WhatsApp. One of the great things about uh, Wind Insurance is that there's a number you can call as well and speak to somebody directly. So, uh, don't worry about don't be, don't be sorry. Debbie, um, email again, and we'll make sure that uh, your your question gets answered and addressed. Right. Well, whilst we're with you, then, Christina, this um, uh, the question that I have that somebody asked me. They're a cyclist, and they, they're in, the, in this really weird situation where they want to put have a bike rack on their car, and. I was thinking about I've ne I've never seen many bike racks on the backs of cars in Portugal. You tend to see people transporting their bicycles on the roof of the vehicle, not on the back. Is there a problem with uh, rear bike racks and does it affect insurance? Does it affect cars? What would you say about that? In fact, it's uh, um, it not, it's not easy. Uh, uh, many com companies uh, have the different ways uh, with the um, uh, civil uh, liable, liable sorry civil liability you oh, know right. yeah yeah it, it's possible uh, uh, agree to cover this damage but there are very specific situations that should be probably analyzed you know okay uh, so um e every time we have uh, some situation like this we have to to read the, the national uh, the uh, Oh, the policy small print, basically. Uh, I, yes, I'm, yes. From case yes. to case. Okay, right, and and so it is a specific thing. I mean, what one thing I am aware of with with um, tow bars and tow hitches here in Portugal is it right that you sometimes have to take an additional um, test if you're planning on towing, or even if you have a, a tow bar on your vehicle? Is that right? You have to. The, the, you know the little the the, the tow hitch the, the the um the tow bar that goes on the back of the vehicle for towing trailers and so on. Um, is that a specific test that you have to do in Portugal? Do you know, or is that uh, maybe I'm 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 going more into motoring, more of an ACP question than than um than an insurance question there. But I, as I understood it, you had to get an, an additional test, or certainly have a different kind of insurance if you're towing with your vehicle, as in you know having a trailer behind the vehicle. Uh no there's no need to to make a, a test there there is no need uh, oh, okay. some some insurers uh cover the damage that we can uh, can uh, uh make to if the bike uh, falls down and uh, then damage to others uh, some companies cover that but some do some don't uh, because we we have to see uh, specific cases OK. All right. Thank you for that. So uh, that's uh, anyone who's dealing with that particular issue of carrying bicycles, which seems to be mainly on the roof and not on the back of the vehicle. And I was hoping Daniel will be yes. here. Triathlete. He might know the best way to carry a bicycle <laughs> on his vehicle. Um, yeah. Go on, go on, Jerry. Yeah, Carl, I, I just jump in. in. In my experience, it's illegal to carry bicycles on the back of vehicles. Right. Um, I, I, I know that from yes. a dealer trying to sell me a a carrier and i said well is that legal and they went away and checked it and said no it's not legal okay so this is I, I one of the questions around issue. this isn't it yeah and i also think there's an issue with towing a car you can't just tow another car in portugal you never see anyone towing a car right yeah yeah it's interesting but there are questions if anyone has an uncertainty there's certainly questions we can we can check out through uh, acp if anybody has uncertainty about very good. Okay, thank you for that. So, as you understand it, the rear bike rack is not is not um, a legal thing here in this country, and that's why people carry them on the roof. 
Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Good to know. All yes. right. Because you just assume, don't you? You better pick if you if that's what you're used to in another part of Europe or in the United States, you might just be able to do that in Portugal. But apparently, not. And, and the strange thing is that a Portuguese car dealer will sell you a rack to put on the back of the car. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, you're not meant to use it, but they no, will no. they will sell it to you anyway. I didn't think you were going to use it. He just asked for it, so I got it for you. Okay, um, S is in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, shout outs are great. Uh, how is everyone doing? Any milestones to celebrate? Do let us know in the chat as well. S has a question. Oh, and Philip and Michael, I love from San Francisco. Uh, good to see you on this call um, as well this evening. Is there any insurance for braces, and what is the price range for them? Is that um, dental? braces a dental cover more generally perhaps we could talk about as well this evening can you take that for us sandra uh, yes there is a um a policy uh for that it's a dental uh all the companies have one uh there there are two two networks that work uh for each uh, company and they must send us email that we we answer okay Okay, brilliant. All right, so there is. Yes, S, um, there are dental policies. Uh, get in touch with insurance about that. Thank you very much. Uh, Joanna, good to see you here. Uh, my husband is an EU citizen and has uh, his NHR. Uh, I am a US citizen and I am waiting to apply for the Article 15. Will this new portal help speed that up? So thanks, uh, Christina and Sandra. Let's go back to Carolina momentarily. This new portal that you're speaking of, the new availability of appointments, is that going to help Joanna? No, no. This portal, um, probably I need to clarify that. This portal is just for family reunification for people that are doing it physically in Portugal. Okay, so for people that ha are piggybacking on their family members that already have their permits. In okay. in her case, um, if um, her husband is a EU citizen, she's going to do a different process, which is a family reunion. It's similar, but it's not the same thing, um, which is a completely separate process. Um, we still don't know if there's gonna be changes with family reunion. Um, because they mentioned something about it, but they have not concluded. Uh, everything remains the same. Um, so up until we have news about it, still the old, uh, old and normal is applicable, which is doing the process here in Portugal. Uh, but it's not the same thing does not mix the waters. Okay, well, you can understand why Jono would be um, hopeful about that, but sadly not on this occasion. And hopefully more and more of these systems will be improved and more spaces and and, and uh, appointments will become available mm -hmm. soon, Joanna. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you, Carolina, on that. No problem. Uh, yeah, is, oh, sorry, go on. Immigration wise, immigration yeah. wise the, the Article 15 is like a better situation. So... From all the perspectives, if if you are already on that on this one, it's like the the fastest, the less bureaucratic. So comparing to all the other options, Joanna already has um, more luck comparing oh, to her fellows from third nationality uh, comparing to the EU. So. Very good. OK, so the bad news and the good news there. Um, so that's good to know. Thank you for adding that, Caroline. That's really helpful. This probably is for you as well. Um, is the AT, the tax office, uh, finances following the wording of what was passed in the budget for when granting NHR under the transitionary scheme? Uh, Rebecca says, I saw reports of the AT denying all requests automatically and then allowing folks to then submit docs to appeal the denial i.e. would a VFS appointment made in 2023 but for a 2024 appointment be accepted as was suggested in the budget. We also have a lease signed in December and registered with Finances in early January 24 as well but that wasn't strictly a requirement if you made a VFS appointment by the, the end of the year last year. Just belt and braces, belt and suspenders for EI advice on this. Have you heard this from elsewhere that the that there is a pushback and people are being asked to appeal, Carolina? Yes, I've heard this. So we still need to wait a little, a little more. Um, that that is what I would recommend. We have been trying this um, new the transitory regime. Technically, 
has been in force from the beginning of the year, but we go to the tax office a few times a week, every week. Mm -hmm. And we have seen a lot of resistance from the, the workers with this transitory regime because they say that no news have been um, implemented internally. Yeah. So they have no new rules. So they cannot, they, they, they say like we are inventing it, but we show them the, the state budget and we explain it and it's in force, um, but we have not yet uh, seen it work. But keep in mind, we are still in January and the transitory regime allows people to do this until the last day of December 2024. And we are counting on it that giving a, a few more weeks to the tax office for them to draft internally uh, like um, that, something telling the workers how to proceed because this is new, never done before no never was a transitory regime for the nhr done before so they don't know what to do what to click what to to fulfill so yeah. they are themselves on a weird situation so we just have to wait again we keep trying every week we try on all fronts like in person in porto and in lisbon and online as well until we get a yes and it will happen we right. just don't know if it's going to be in a week, in a month, we, we need to wait and see. And uh, there's no need to for an appeal yet on our circumstances because we just don't go through with the request if they tell us it's going to be denied. So we are just waiting to see until they tell us we have the green light to do it. You can you can proceed. So it's in, this is an interesting situation and clearly EI are pushing and, and standing up for their clients according to what you understood from the proposals last year and the finances people are in a somewhat difficult situation because like with IMA the communications are not strong from their bosses if you like and I guess it, it, the atmosphere might, would be very interesting to a foreigner to see the lawyers of EI standing up in finances and say and and fighting it out not not physically but the, these are quite um quite normal in a way, aren't they? Portuguese exchanges where you will be arguing the case for your clients and financiers will say yes or no, but it will be quite a robust exchange, I think. Is it fair to say that? Yes, it is. It's <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and then the foreigners thinking, oh, that sounds really quite aggressive. But it's just, it's just Portuguese people at work and, and communicating yeah. with each other. If Fantastic. you are ever bored, you can just go to a tax office, <laughs> gra grab yourself a popcorn and look the drama happening from well, all fronts it's really no i'm i'm joking but it's it's, but a, it's really. a tough yeah it's <laughs> a right. tough um climate there it's it's heavy because no one goes happy to the tax office everyone oh, yeah. goes like problematic and worried oh. and yes. hoping to accomplish something yeah and uh, well okay this is amazing a lot of people around the world are watching webcams of nazare and the big surf it may be that if the um, Portuguese government put webcams in the in the finances offices as well, there'll be quite a few people watching, as you say, with their popcorn around the world. OK, thank you for that answer. And thank you for that question uh, there, Rebecca, as well. Um, and I think you're seeing some comms uh, in the chat there uh, for you, Carolina, about uh, you and Claudia perhaps working uh, for Alex there. So um, maybe uh, you could pick that up behind the scenes there. Um, AT, better watch out. Here comes EI. I'm sure that's what they think. Uh-oh, the girl, <laughs> the, the amazing, the powerful women of EI are on their way over. Um, no, you deal with them. No, no, you deal with them. Okay, um, let's go to um, YouTube. Actually, no, before we go to YouTube, let's go to Linda. Because last week um, we heard from you, Linda, and there were tears of relief uh, on the screen. It was quite the moment, and we were very glad to hear your good news. What have you got for us this week, Linda? I think you're there. Oh, we need you to unmute as well there, Linda. There. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, are you going to start me crying again this week? No, it, it was that was a few weeks ago. It was right. just in the last just an hour ago or an hour and a half ago that you heard the good news. And I just wanted to thank EI, of course, above all. 
But above, above all, this lady right here, Carolina, without her, I would never have made it through. Thank right. you, my dear. It was wonderful. <laughs> yes, I'm sure I was you. crying with tears of relief last well, week. I know. Well, it's it, just, it, it was I tragic so tears it. a few weeks ago. Last week, you had yeah, a moistened up last week yeah um, i don't know what was going week. on but yeah i probably was sending my my passport off to the consulate in san francisco but yeah. i got it back <laughs> what I mean, wonderful news wonderful this news. morning yeah so you're talking you know, about wonderful that. linda i'm so happy for you thank you for your words and yeah. it was lovely working with you and we will keep on working until you have the permit in your hand which is closer than ever Yay. And and I want to thank everybody from Expats Portugal, all of you. It's what a wonderful group. People ask me, do you have any friends over there? And I think, you know, I don't really, but it feels like it. <laughs> I, <love you. laughs> I, wish, I wish someday, I don't know if you ever all gathered together somewhere for a wonderful party and then all sorts of people like myself could come and join you and yeah, well, we, we, have, we certainly talked about that, and it should happen, shouldn't it? I think Jackie's uh, like uh, nodding in approval. Oh, no, there. It would be great. It'd be great. For one, and and Jerry as well. This this has been talked about, hasn't it? And it wouldn't it be lovely to have the class of twenty four uh, celebrating together? Whatever. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We 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 are going to try and do something. The the the, the difficulty is where do we do it? Because it's yeah. you know is there? But but I think we're going to try and get something kick started in the Tumar area, because we've had so many members in, in, in recent months I either have come to this area or are in the process of coming to this area. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we're going to start yeah. something there. But so, so Linda, but, but whatever, you have friends in Portugal. You're looking at us. We are I your see. friends. So I you see. call us, you yeah. let us know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, we'll be delighted to meet you wherever we can. And, and uh, or if not, connect you with people who are local to you so yeah. and and also we're working on a, a, a whole new area on our website where we can uh, for, for for friendships not not a dating agency mm -hmm. <laughs> but for for people to make friendships Is that right Astrid <laughs> there she is Yes, Jerry, that's right. Um, we should have uh, something to show within the next few weeks I hope. So um, yes, but but uh, look, if people find love, that's great. Jerry. Well, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we've got February the fourteenth coming up, haven't we? And what about if it is dating people want? Could could, could we not stretch to that as well? <laughs> oh, well, I, I, that's not the. Uh, yes, of course we can, uh, <laughs> but that's not the primary thing. It's it's no. it's about people making friends, and it doesn't have to be about dating and so on. So fair enough. Fair uh, enough. We're yeah. we're very aware that a lot of people come here and can be a little bit lonely mm -hmm. uh, once the honeymoon period is over and so on. And so it would be nice to be able to reach out and find people with similar interests and 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 you know and and so on. And and that's what we're trying to achieve. And if, if if the odd wedding arises out of that, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> it cost the fortune in hats. All right. Yeah. Brilliant. Great news. Oh, keep an eye on <laughs> keep an eye on the website. And Linda, thank you so much uh, oh, for thank sharing, you. sharing thank your, you. your update with us. Really, really appreciate it. It's always lovely to have a Linda moment. So uh, we'll talk to you again next week for the, the Linda moment on the Dream Team oh, wow. session, <laughs> which this is. Uh, every every Thursday evening at nine, the Dream Team session. <laughs> Um, so thanks, Linda, for that very much indeed. And we, I noticed we've got uh, Carolina, uh, Carolina Moralia with us as well this evening, as well as Carolina Cunha from uh, EI. We've got Carolina from Casa Portuguesa. How are you, Carolina? Hello, everyone. Thank you. I'm very well. I hope you're all well too. Uh, I'm here for Casa Portuguesa, but I'm also here to answer any questions you might have about uh, driver's license, school enrollments, you name it. Oh, so, great. Just to give a big hi to everyone. Thanks for being here. How's it looking with uh, rentals and purchases at the moment? Um, I'm noticing that uh, it seems that we have a bigger offer. Mm -hmm. Not, not, not something huge, but we are looking for some uh, bigger offer in terms of in the market the prices are still very high although i'm sensing some changes for the downside 
Are which you? is good, Okay. not uh, extremely noticeable. But Right. for example, I had a client that she needed an apartment for 750 euros, which is a pretty low budget. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to find anything special. But I managed to uh, present some options, which is always good. So I'm sensing that very low, but a little decrease on the price, but um, which is very good. Carolina, expect more phone calls tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear her say 750? no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> it's it's like an exception, okay? Uh, Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay, fair it's enough. still pretty high, but uh, I believe it's becoming a little bit more friendly, but not something huge, okay? Very So interesting to hear this. Thank you for that. And in, in the last call we had, we were hearing about people who've chosen Stabal to go to, Jerry talking there about Tamar. The the area of of focus is broadening. I mean, it used to be all about Lisbon and Porto, didn't it, for a long time? Yes. Uh, maybe a little bit of Silver Coast, Caldas de Reña. But think people are looking further afield. There are more names on the list now, aren't there, in terms of geography? Yes, uh, Tumar is one of the regions. I had a client uh, that was looking for more the interior, like um, Caldas da Rainha. That's more the literal. But um, I have some clients that are willing to explore, uh, for example, Alentejo, Santarém, um, a bit more for um, Porto Alegre, not, not as much, but they are looking for places that are, that are far from Lisbon and from Porto, for sure, which is good because Portugal needs to have life outside of these cities so all the interior cities can uh, grow and have more services and and so all portugal is accessible for who whatever whoever wants to live in it Well said. Love the sound of that. And Evra, Viseo, these other t cities. Jerry, would you care to add something here? Because we are. What's been spoken about here is the Jerry effect. I think in Tamar, um, you're a bit of a a magnet, an epicenter of of, of people settling it in 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 that sort of area in central. Have you noticed a, a change in these last couple Yes. of years and a focus? Yes, there's there's um, uh, th there's been quite a bit of interest in in central Portugal, particularly in in the Tomar and the surrounding area of Tomar. Um, I, it might have something a little bit to do with our influence, and we we've been recommending it to people. Um, that that might be something to do with, but also I think it's because properties are affordable, um, whether renting or buying. Um, and uh, it's not a bad area anyway. It's still, you know, it's quite well connected to get in and out of Lisbon and the coast and so on. So it's good for that reasons. And and in the time that I've lived in this area, I've actually seen, and I continue to see Tomar growing and expanding. It's <clears throat> constantly got new restaurants opening. It's constantly got new stores opening. Um, we did just had its first Aldi has just opened. Um, there's a new shopping mall going in in the next uh, in, 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 in this year at some point. Wow. And uh, so generally speaking, the area seems to be improving quite a lot, largely in part, I think, or largely due to the number of expats who are coming into this area. Yep, amazing. And I mean, it's just a beautiful place anyway, isn't it? The city of Tamar. And to have all those Yeah. little extra infrastructure as well is just going to keep adding to Yeah. the, the wonder of the place. We're we're actually we're rather hoping. Uh, I'm trying to get a meeting with the mayor, and uh, we're rather hoping we can get her or and or her team to come along and feature on a webinar and tell us why tomorrow is such a great place to live. So watch this space on Fantastic. that. We're, we're something Looking forward we're working to that. on. Yeah. Yeah, sounds amazing. And thank, thank you for that, Jerry. And uh, thank you, Rebecca, uh, with a, a little um, reminder here that Portugal is not just the mainland. You've got the uh, Azores and the Madeira as well, the autonomous regions. So Can go I on just to add Madeira. something? Please Sorry. do. Um, these areas outside Port in Lisbon is how Jerry said. They are more uh, budget-friendly. Not, um, how can I say this? Uh, they are more budget-friendly and some comparing to Lisbon and Port for sure. So they are great, great areas to explore.
Yeah, superb. And what and what would you say about the autonomous regions? I mean, you, you can help people there, can't you, in Zorish and Madeira as well? Yes, yes, we can. And with their own unique, I mean, they're, they're still, they still have the soul of Portugal about them, but they are unique and different experiences as well, aren't they, going over to those uh, archipelagos over there in the autonomous regions. Thanks for that uh, prompt there, Rebecca. Well, let's stay with you, Carolina M, because uh, we've got Arab asking, can someone guide me? You said before, Carolina, can someone guide me as to how to obtain a Portuguese driving license? You mentioned that before. Uh, yes, I can. Um, I was just replying. He can send me an email so I can send him all the documentation. One thing that I want to uh, give warning is to have a driver's license, you have to have a residence permit. Without it, we can't move forward with the process. So it's the first thing you have to have. And a driver's record, it's all also important because it's one of the documents uh, that you need to have. And it has to be uh, apostyled, apostilled. Mm -hmm. both, um, work, both work for me <laughs> <laughs> and, and those two are quite important to have so um, without them we cannot proceed one thing that we have to have in mind is that IMT is very slow so they are with more than one year delay to uh, deliver the driver's license yep. so this means that we have a, a an appointment to deliver the documents, an appointment to renew the, the temporary permits, and probably another one. So at least three visits, uh, because uh, you will receive a temporary document that will serve as your driver's license, and you can drive for six months with that document. But since you won't receive the card in time, uh, we will have to renew it. Okay, and what about in that time? Thanks for that, Carolina, because Rebecca is asking, is there any way to speed up the license exchange? Well, not really. You just have to be in that queue. But what if we have to go back to the USA for an emergency and have no license? What can they do about that? To have an international license, we recommend you to go to ACP. Yep. And okay. they will give you a document that has the same uh, expiry date of the temporary permits. Great. That's a really good tip. And ACP, Rebecca, you can find ACP in the Expats Portugal directory. And there was one other from back in the day, Jerry. Thanks, Carolina, for the time being. Um, there were some higher companies, weren't there, who had people's records, uh, that are like a, 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 a PDF or a, a photograph of a driving license, which could get through that problem potentially, possibly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that's legal, but uh, <laughs> I know that... Oh, of that, course, yeah, um, because, yeah, you would, you, 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 they would have your license on file, but you would still need yeah. a license to produce for a police officer, for example, so that wouldn't work. In Correct, that yes, yes. So um, uh, I think I think the IBP, the International Driver's Permit, is, as, as Carolina suggests, that is the solution. It, it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's about 25 euros or something. The, the, the temporary license that uh, will be issued by EMI will be fine for driving in Portugal. But if you want to drive outside Portugal, I, I, I totally agree it's worth getting an, an IDP, an international driver's permit, right. until you have the proper Portuguese license. Once you have the proper Portuguese license, you'll have no problem driving anywhere in the world, as far as I know. I've, I've, I've certainly not encountered any problems renting cars around Europe or in the US or Canada with, with my uh, Portuguese license. It, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like the Portuguese passport, it's a, it's a, it's a highly popular and, and sought after passport. Driving license, we very rarely, I, I've never heard of somebody being pushed back for having a Portuguese driving license elsewhere in the world. So as yeah. just like the passport has a lot of international value. Thanks for that, Jerry. Uh, sequencing on that then, uh, Carolina, Rebecca's saying, do we go to the ACP before submitting the license? What's the right sequence to do on this? Okay, so uh, the process is uh, when you deliver the documents, including your driver's license, um, they will contact to the DMV that issued the, the license. So basically you will be without the license and you will have to go to ACP before because the document that you need, um, you will get it with the temporary permit. Otherwise you wouldn't need to go to ACP. Okay, very good. Okay, Thank very you. Good. Thank you. Um, overseas driving record will do, or it needs to be Portugal slash EU driving record. I think, Arab, if you're from the United States, you need your DMV record, don't you? Yep. Yes. 
All right. Thanks, Carolina. Now, we uh, let's stay with you. Um, Linda was asking if there's anything to say about the Algarve uh, in terms of uh, the property market there. Is it flattening out, cooling down? What would you say about the Algarve? I'm, I mean, let's bear in mind it's a big place, isn't it? It does vary from east to west uh, and there will be fluctuations. And as you put it before, there'll be more uh, some more budget friendlier places than others. What's your general view, though, Carolina, on the Algarve at the moment? Uh, Algarve is basically staying the same because um, it's a very a touristic region. So uh, the problem with Algarve is the offer because we have many um, apartments for uh, short-term rentals. So the, the ones that we have for long-term are usually high-priced. Yep. Okay. And, and I guess in the Algarve, if a landlord... If a property owner is going to be thinking about doing longer term, it will be in the winter, won't it? Come spring and summertime, their heads are turned towards the tourist, right? Uh, uh, yes. Um, I'm, can you repeat the question? Is, is it better to find somewhere in the Algarve, probably in the winter? Because of the Oh, uh, yeah, probably, but not as much. I had a client and she had a very low budget and I... Found, I was looking for an apartment in the winter time, and it took uh, a long time because her budget was around eight hundred, and wow. it was very very difficult. Algarve is a high priced region; uh, it doesn't fluctuate as much, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't change very much with the season. The thing that you notice is that during the summer time, yeah, it's more 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 difficult. But yes. in the winter is difficult as well the, the different isn't uh fair enough so highly sought after uh, at any time of the year by the sound of it especially so in the summer but yeah still quite a challenge so i hope that helps linda um in 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 some way with your question about the algarve there let's let's pop over to uh, youtube then and ask some questions that have come in over there good evening to you all over on youtube hi alan in san diego uh the now new who we see from time to time uh, on youtube over there on the 8th of december i think this is for you uh, carolina c uh, on the 8th of december we submitted a d1 visa application on the 27th of december the embassy asked for some more docs documents and we submitted them on the 2nd of january on the 19th of January, we asked the embassy about the status and they said the application is under analysis. Uh, no new documents are required. How much more time do you think it might take now? Uh, we need to know a little bit more, don't we, about where that might be? Where, where did the person apply? Yeah, right. OK, we need we need to know which country uh, that would be the now. So let's move on yeah. to uh, Lorraine uh, on YouTube uh, chat as well. Hi, Anna. I live in Portimao and headed heading, heading back to Canada for a visit. My friend and I are going to swap homes and cars. Will my friend be covered under my insurance if anything happens? Now, I'm going to guess then that Lorraine has got Portuguese car insurance. This is for you, Christina. Um, and it's the it's the car that gets insured, isn't it? Not the owner. So, Will, do you think Lorraine's friend will be okay uh, driving her car on that basis? Are you there for us, Christina? Oh, yeah, yes, he can drive in Portugal. Yep. Yeah, uh, but he must have the the. He need to 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 start the process to legalize his less license and uh, the resident card. Oh, it's okay. It's important. Okay. So, so, so we need to make sure that's happening behind the scenes, Lorraine. That you you are a Portuguese driver. You've got the Portuguese driving license. I think this is about whether, and you might need to clarify this for us whether your Portuguese insured car is okay for your friend to drive. Can you just confirm for me that that is the case, Lorraine, on that one? So thanks, Christina, for the time being on that. Um, Hamad, hi, everyone. Does does new nationality law applicable on manifestation de interesse waiting time from the day of submission, acceptance or biometric, also does it affect the PR permanent residency time? Does that make sense to you, Caroline? I'm a little bit out of my depth asking that question. Yeah, so the expression of interest, the manifestation interest, has an estimated timeline of two up to three years. And um, that's usually on the year and a half, two year mark, the person is called to the interview to go and take the biometrics as they were mentioning. Uh, and then there's more weight uh, on that. Regarding the date on the actual permit, 
I, I think, and I'm not sure, but I think it's the date of the appointment that is the one that will show up there, but I'm not 100% sure. I cannot um, be certain. I can ask internally to one of my to one of all my colleagues and pa pass it on to the to Gilda for next week okay. uh, in this situation. So Hamad, uh, Haida, get in touch with EI about that. You can find them in the Expats Portugal uh, business directory. And of course, you'll get a discount if you're an Expats Portugal member. Uh, you can get a discount on EI services there as well. So I hope that helps, Hamad. Um, good evening. Ramon is asking. This is a great question. We'll stay with you, Carolina C, for this. Um, good evening, everyone. Is there any way as a UK citizen to become a Portuguese citizen without the D7? Now, I'm, I imagine you're talking about residency rather than citizenship in this case, because you're talking about the D7, Ramon. Um, but there are other visas available and there could be ancestry. So could you could you give us some of the other options that would not be the D7, but a different route for this person? Well, um, nationality questions, I believe it would be more suited for Danielle. Yeah, okay. but uh, I can touch the surface of that. You need to have the living like on simple terms. You need to have lived in Portugal for at least five years um, legally before you apply for nationality. So you need to fulfill this first criteria, living in Portugal legally. How do you live in Portugal legally? Through having a residency. Uh, which category you choose residency, it's not important because the end of the road is the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to do a D7 visa because it's um, it's inconvenient or because you don't fulfill the criteria, it's we could try and fit you for a different type of visa yeah. or assist you. And what I do in most of my consultations, not all people are D7 ready. A lot yeah. of them, they need preparation. Uh, I need to explain to them point blank what are the minimums and they need to manage sometimes they need to rearrange um stuff with their financial advisor or rethink their strategy whatever that that means and be able to accomplish that so that's i suggest that this person reach out to us because probably they are having problems with uh, matching the d7 um minimums or something else or they are it's too confusing that they think that they can skip it but yes. a d7 is a great visa why skip it <laughs> comparing to other ones so much more bureaucratic yes it's a, it's a good one so as you say that this might just be a reaction based on misinformation or not understanding the information correctly and it'll be good to have a coaching call with ei to really for this person to really understand uh, what, to reconsider the D7. And if that is truly not an option for you, there are other options available as well, Ramon. So get in touch with EI on that. Uh, let's stay with you, Carolina. Um, Maralia, uh, sorry, Carolina Cunha here um, with this question from Vision Portugal Dream. Good evening. Does anyone know how long residence cards are taking to arrive, please? It's been four months for us so far. We inquired at IMA in person and we were told to wait longer. Thank you. Have they started printing them yet again, Carolina? Uh, yeah, technically, yes, but <laughs> not really. Okay. Since um, I've seen from September on, um, the cards are on hold, pretty much. Okay. Um, I've heard about a problem in Casa de Moeda, which is the, the printing, like the government's office for printing this type of official documents. And... It has something to do with the transition from SEF to IMA. And I, I don't know if there's with the, um, the new symbol. I don't know how to say the, the new oh, the instead logo. of SEF. Yes, the new the logo. logo. That's a spanner, spanner in the works, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think I think it's because of that, but don't quote me. It might be just a rumor. <laughs> but okay. yeah, it's still from September on. It's normal. Everyone is pretty much waiting and even a little bit prior if applicants were D8 applicants, so digital nomads, uh -huh. those uh, applicants have also been seeing a delay in their 
issuance of the um, residence permit uh, due to social security um, intricacies. So, well, yeah. okay. So, yep, you, th they were right to tell you to wait. I'm afraid there's no, uh, we've got no improvement on that. The VPD, I'm going to call you. Um, so fingers crossed that those printing presses will, will crank into action soon and people will get their cards. Um, the Nauna who was asking earlier on about times, that was for Russia, uh, Portuguese, Portuguese consulate or VFS in Russia. So what view do you have on that for people coming in from uh, uh, with Russian processes? Well, um, I've done process in Russia, and but they I did them um, at least a year ago. Um, but I, from my colleagues, what I've heard, it's taking more than the more than the normal. So the normal is sixty days. Mm -hmm. So and on a few on a few countries, they they take the sixty days as if they were business days, so around two and three months, but. Russia wise, I I would say leaning more on the three month mark, okay. if not a little more. There you go, Nanu. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Thanks for the answer, Carolina. There. Let's go to uh, Carolina Moralia, if we may. Um, and this was a good question, uh, Linda. My U.S. driver's license expires in August twenty four. Um, if I have a temporary license and the permanent license hasn't been issued until September or later, will I have to renew my license? So it has to be valid at the time of applying. Is that right, Carolina? Yes, uh, the license has to be valid once we submit the documents. If the uh, license uh, expires in the meantime, there's not a problem because at the time it was submission, everything was okay. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that nice, concise answer. There was another one uh, over on YouTube. Oh, uh, Paul. Paul Emantega. Sounds like a Portuguese name to me. Uh, what is a driver's record? Um, so what would that be? This is the um, your driving history, right? If So, for example, in the US from the DMV. But this is required from wherever you come in the world, is it? Yes, it is. It's the document where you have, like, all your history, as Carl mentioned. And um, that document is requested for every country. Okay, fantastic. All right. I think we go back to other Carolina now. How can we change the appointment date with VFS in 2024? Uh, asks Alex. Does it invalidate the fact that the appointment was set in 2023 or that date remains valid for the purposes of the NHR, Carolina? So until the person has the NHR in place, I would say do not touch your VFS appointment. Even if you lose the money for not going to the actual appointment, don't worry about it. You'll just schedule a new one. Probably you were, you were not going to see those $40 anyway. So um, just uh, save it on a little drawer. Don't think about it. Um, and later, you just schedule a new one. Uh, a, a totally new one after this one probably expired. In Alex's situation, uh, his his and uh, appointments are for February and March, so probably by the time we have the NHR, they have already passed. Uh, but there's no problem after that. The you just make a new one. And so the the advice: step away from the v, for change from changing the VFS appointment. Don't touch that button. If you've got one, stay with it if you possibly can, right? Because these are gold dust, aren't they? These these appointments. So thank you, Carolina, from Alex there. Um, let's go to um, YouTube. I can't believe it. it's 10, 10 minutes to go. It's absolutely flown by tonight. That's been a very, very fast hour uh, on the Dream Team tonight. Thank you, team. You're doing a great job. Um, good evening, says Sandra Singh. I have residency and now I need to apply for three years. Where can I apply or make an appointment? So um, that's a renewal on residency, isn't it, for the three-year section? How to go about doing that, Carolina? Yes, Um I know that depends on when did the person mention when the the permit their permit expired? Don't think so, Sandra. Can you let us know on that? That could be quite useful. If it expires this year, I think they it's already possible to schedule the online renewal, uh -huh. and we are still uncertain of how it will go because of the changes from Ceph to IMA. So. Uh, I know that my my colleagues have been able to schedule a lot of people already. And I think for people with permit expiring this year, it's feasible online. We still don't know if in-person will be mandatory or not. 
for some people, yes or no, but in the future, if everyone will be in person, um, I think that was what they were trying to establish. Uh, mm -hmm. But we will see with the time. I know I, sometimes when I respond, I hear myself like, we will see. I don't know. It depends. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many, how many different I'm ways sorry. can you say the same thing? I yeah, have, it's I like it's answer. frustrating. And I'm sorry for giving frustrating answers sometimes, but we live this all day, every day. It's our it. reality. Yeah, so absolutely. I hear myself and I know I, I sound frustrating, so I apologize, but I rather tell you the truth than just yes. giving you a perfect scenario, yes. which does not correspond to, to the truth. Absolutely. Unlike our webinar just now, where um, most things here in Portugal, if not all of them, exceeded expectations, that can't be said of, of IMA right now, can mm -hmm. it? Perhaps the opposite when it comes to IMA and Seth. For the time being, we've got to give them room to um, to improve, of course. Um, honesty is the best policy, says Rebecca, who's asking you a question uh, here, Catalina. Do you have? Do you all have any idea why New York City VFS is among the slowest, if not the slowest, to get visas approved? What's wrong with New York? Yes, I agree with Rebecca. I don't know why. Uh, I, I would like to know as well, but they take their sweet time. They, they touch the three-month mark. Yeah. Pretty much almost every time. Um, my last client, I believe it was, she submitted on October 27 and she got her visa this week, if I'm not mistaken. So it was less than three months because if we don't count the bank holidays and the Christmas and all that. Um, but yeah, New York City, I have the same feedback. And if if you find out, let me know because I would also... Um, appreciate it. It's not very New York, is it? We, you know, we associate New York with like chop, chop, busy, busy. Time is money, but not at the um, at the consulate there uh, or with the VFS. So, uh, yeah, let us know if that changes, Rebecca. We don't know. We don't know. You you might expect California to be a bit more laid back than New York, but there, there you have it. Um, S is asking, um, yeah, if I find it, I'll let you know, says Rebecca. And S is saying, is it possible to book a mini consultation with uh, A, with EI, um, I've, if I've already had a full session? Now, I think um, we had uh, Ramon earlier on who was wanting a coaching session. Now, by that, that's the initial consultation with EI that you can book with EI, and do a kind of fact find little coaching call, uh, get a timeline, uh, which can be booked. If somebody's already had that, which it sounds like S has had, um, with everything changing with the NHR, can they book a second one of those? Is it possible to do two of those? Yes, we can. It's a matter that you just email me. If you have my direct contact, feel free to do it. If you don't, you can just email us to the general email. Yeah. And I will be sure to to do a follow up because sometimes on the NHR consultation the person was too focused to laser focus on that matter and yes. either didn't ask the the visa questions that they wanted or they I I we answered them but they did not uh, memorize it because There's they a lot were all over up. the place yeah yeah, yeah I remember so, the end of last year was intense wasn't it. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> it was, it was too much, Carl. <laughs> yes. No, I remember, I remember making the recordings, you know, with, with you and Dwarant about the NHR. Those were tense times and, you know, it's still intense, but uh, yeah. it's, it's just it relaxed a little bit, uh, relatively speaking since then. So yes, S and to anybody else who wants to book that first call, um, with EI and 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 become a, an Expats Portugal member, of course, and get a discount too. But you can book those sessions and very helpful they are too as a first step um, in moving towards Portugal. Andrea is asking, I am in US and had a walk-in VFS global appointment in December with all required documents for D7 visa application except the FBI background check. This was delayed because I had to make six attempts at getting fingerprints done uh, before achieving prints that finally could be read by the FBI. Sounds like quite a hassle there, Andrea. Then when I got the background check back from the FBI, I had to send that to the US State Department for the apostille, which I just received now in 24. So now I'll make my second VFS appointment as a walk-in and hopefully we'll have all, have all the satisfied uh, requirements there. The question is, do you think I will be eligible for NHR in these circumstances? And you, can you please sync this with what you just said about VFS appointments? By the way, I'm in Houston and the VFS office here just started processing Portugal visas 
does not seem to know exactly what to do yet. So there's a couple of aspects to this, aren't there? Houston is new. Um, what do you make of that? And in those circumstances, is the NHR still a possibility for Andrea? Okay, in this situation, um, Andrea, you are mentioning that you did an appointment, but you did a walk-in. Um, which one? I'm sorry. It was a um, walk-in, wasn't it? But it did, uh, the FBI thing seemed to delay it um, with okay. the and, and If the you have proof, you went... Uh, on your walking, probably by showing the um, the fee that you paid, the consular fee or oh, yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, like um, when you when you take a ticket and stay in line, we we probably be able to use that that ticket. I don't know if you saved it. Um, we need some proof that you that you that you had something. Yes. Um, before. Uh, 2020, the end of 2023. This is to prove the intention, isn't it, at a certain yeah. time in the process? That you yeah. initiated a process before 2020, 2023. Yep. Okay. If you do, we can probably fit you on the um, transitory regime. And also, if you applied for a D7, did you use the rental agreement? If so, was it done before October 10? If it was, we could also use that one alone. If not, we need to go with the appointment, the first one that I just mentioned. Uh, so it's either just to qualify you for the transitory regime. It's either one of these options. Right. Um, I would probably need to look it over. The proof that you have, that you went to see if the tax, if it looks reasonable, or or not if it's just because if you paid through man, money order probably you don't have any proof yeah. rather if you just paid through other means of substance because sometimes the consulates demand a, a certain type of way okay regarding the the fbi criminal check record probably your process is still at vfs on a pile waiting for it if you have not been notified by the consulate by by now so probably your process is still sitting there um which means that your number of days of wait still have not started to count so when you deliver your criminal record probably then they will let you know if your process where your process is because if it is still there that counts as your day one if it's already in the consulate you can start counting your three months. Well, they will always count from the day you deliver the criminal record because without it, it's not considered a finished process. It's one of the mandatory documents. So, and you you apostilled. You don't, you didn't have to do it. Um, I'm sorry if you didn't know that, but in Houston, Houston belongs under the jurisdiction of Washington D.C. They don't demand the the criminal record to be apostilled. Because that you, that has worried some other people here, didn't it? What yeah. does my FBI report need to be apostilled? No. Just New okay. York. All Just right. New okay. York. In, All right. In Washington D.C. and its um, ramifications, it's not. And also in San Francisco, it isn't. As long as the person keeps the the envelope closed, where when it comes from the FBI. My, my recommendation is that people always, always, always ask for a soft copy to their email yep. and a hard copy to their mailbox. And why? Because if problems like Andreas happen, where their fingerprints have problems being detected, which for sometimes um, but they are worn off by life, I don't know. Um, hard work, <laughs> hard work, yeah. Yeah. Um, in that case, um, if you don't ask for a soft copy, your criminal record in a in a closed envelope, inside it's written, we couldn't access your criminal record because we couldn't access your fingerprint. Really? You don't know until oh. you get to the appointment. So please ask for a soft copy to your email so you can see and you don't have surprises. Because and however people... tempted you are, do not open that envelope. It's sealed for a reason. Okay. And yeah. this is why, folks, great answer. And that's why uh, we have, uh, who was it who was saying this? Nancy, thank you. Carolina of EI is knowledgeable and a pleasure to work with. Highly recommended. 
which brings us i'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions here tonight it's one minute past 10 and uh, i don't want to keep the dream team here you've done a fantastic job tonight um all of you thank you carolina cunha thank you carolina moralia from casa portuguese nei of course and thank you as well to christina and sandra from winsurance great job this evening for those of you who we didn't get to uh, call winsurance tomorrow um, go to the business directory make those appointments uh, with the professionals you've seen on the screen tonight a great job folks from rebecca thank you everyone thank you for all the lovely feedback coming in uh, but we've got to leave it there tonight just very quickly and if we may it's a very important webinar coming up next thursday right astrid Yes, Carl, we are going to, it's it's the first that we've done, actually, it's probably uh, well overdue, but it's um, it's relation to US taxes in citizen living here, as well as being a, a, a American citizen, and then uh, what's expected of you with your taxation. So an important one, a tax special uh, next week, 7.30, and then, of course, the Dream Team again at 9. So thank you, everybody. And apologies again to anyone whose questions we didn't get to, but come over to the forum, become an Expats Portugal member, and find these folks uh, in the business directory. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Dream Team. <laughs>